Hey there everybody, hope you've been keeping very well. So I'm just going to catch up and do um, the third part of this cheap dovetail saw look around. Dealt with this one and it's been useful to start working with the other one and develop some thoughts and I'll do a very quick summing up video, you won't have to wait too long for that. Um, so this time we're concentrating on the gents saw, um, or gents saw um, from these guys. I bought it myself but that's where you get it from if you want to find the same one and it's a catch it in the light there William Greaves and Sons um, on their site these have got steel backs and it's the only ones with 14 teeth per inch the other ones um, of which I have over here I will just go and grab these ones might look nicer and they do cut very well but they're 20 TPI um, and they're brilliant but I think if you're maybe getting going, learning to sharpen a 20 TPI is maybe a little bit more difficult. But, you know, you can choose. It's totally up to you. So, as before, we're going to cut a bit of 6 by one and a half. This is really, it's a pretty stupid test. Um, but it's interesting to explore the limits of what's sensible. You wouldn't use a dovetail saw to do this. I think you would only use a small back saw with maybe timber up to about sort of four inches wide. But... Nevertheless, we'll see how we how we go. And you can imagine using this, it's um, much lighter than the Spear and Jackson because you don't have that heavy brass back. But at the same time, just because it doesn't have the weight, you still just want to let the saw do the work. If you stop pushing it too much, it's like with a stool. But one thing that does allow this tool to make a bit of progress is that because the blade is thinner and the curve seems a bit thinner, you're not removing so much material, so progress isn't all that slow. Obviously, you know, if there's a wood this big, I want to pop it down on my sawing horses and use a panel saw, but um, for the purposes of this, the bench hook is, is fine. Stimulating stuff, eh? So in a pinch, I could do this. I'm not sure I'd want to. You can see there, it's a very, very fine cut. Got a little bit of break out there where it drifted off a little bit, but um, yeah, fine. Obviously, it's going to be much better at fine joinery, and um, that's what we're going to head over and take care of now. With a, using this one a little bit more, what I have found is that it's excellent for the purpose of dovetailing. Um, I don't want to go into too much about the summing up, but I think the Spear and Jackson has a bit more of an all-rounder. But this one is very good for dovetailing. Um, you know, this is three-quarter inch board. Um, you know, I think you could go up to things which are an inch in common work, right down to half inch and thinner, quarter inch if you're doing some really nice fine draw sides or boxes. But yeah, it's, um, it's pretty good. It's able to go through without snatching or grabbing. be tempting to push any saw a bit too hard but most of the time you just got to use a little bit of pressure and it's mainly just working it backwards and forwards and I think some people might be put off by the just the handle of these the turned handle you might think it's not not quite as comfortable but it's no different than holding a chisel and it's still sensibly designed it goes down the palm Finger down by the side. I don't find it too difficult to use. Yes, I think you know those 
lovely handles you see on traditional saws and the more expensive versions you can get today, they're brilliant. But that's not to say you can't get some very good results with this. Put a new blade in this coping saw, it's very, very coarse. Got a lot of bite to it. The benefit is it flies through the three quarter material. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pause it there, I'll do my chopping out, and then we'll get on to the, the other side of it. Yeah, I've just saved you the boredom there of watching somebody chop out the waste. I guess if you're interested, you can take a look. I don't, um, I don't, I'm certainly thick stock like three quarter. I don't try and make it perfect inside. All I do is try and hit my baselines nice and accurate. And then if just undercut a touch, because it's just not a show surface. So I, I don't personally see the need to make that really flat. It will come up accurately on the um, shoulders. That's, um, that's a bit more important. Yeah, this has been fun to do. It's it's given me a bit of time to reflect and think about other things I'd like to do. And I think it will be that focus on never being an inverted snob and speaking down about things which are of higher value or they cost more money. Um, or a snob and say, you've only got to use... It's like, well, you know, there's options out there and there's a solution for for most people. <sighs> One thing you do, I think, have to be with this is it's less forgiving than Spear and Jackson because it doesn't leave such a, a whack and break curve. You need to make sure you're on the line because you know, that's a good thing, but it's just I say, a little bit less forgiving, but the cut is finer because of it. I might just when we finish up do some speed cuts and an off cut so you can see if you do do those slightly misleading things where it's you push a saw how quickly it will cut And some people choose to leave a little bit of waste on here, but it's nice to go to the line if you can. <sighs> I 
kan ikke bare flakke den med kugene. A moment of truth will it actually fit? Who knows? I think we'll take that. This gun is completely respectable. The only thing was down to me, I just ran on a little bit too far with a the saw there. But any of you who actually look at old furniture will see things like that in, in older pieces, it's not unusual. As Tom Jones would say, it's not unusual. But yeah, it's quite respectable enough. So yeah, as a dovetailer, that one I think is the dedicated dovetail saw. So I just tap this one to pieces. And just give you the benefit of seeing, I say almost things that are a bit silly, speed cuts, because you don't ever, in my mind, that's fine. Let the saw do its job. And that's fine. And you can get it where it's in there and it's push, 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 push. That's unnecessary and you're probably going to drift a little bit. Um, see how far I can split it. I think that's worth mentioning, I think you'll probably pick it up here, is you can see there just that little wafer just in there. That's just where I ran the saw really close to the other curve. So that's how accurate this one can be. It's literally just a wafer of timber left in there. So yeah, great little dovetail saw that one. Um, so thanks for watching that one and we'll get a couple more um, uploaded for you in a moment.